I've stacked my background squares and put the pumpkin stem right at the top. I'm gonna slide my stacked pumpkins right up to the stem and kind of double check that there's about the same amount on each side. Then I've stacked up my face pieces and I'll get his face on there. I'm going to mark a diagonal line from corner to corner and this is going to be my first stitching line and I will just use a rolling chalk marker because you want a line that's going to disappear. You don't want a permanent line. Now I'm going to layer. I have a print. This is going to be the back of the hot pad. I have a layer of Insel Bright. You can see the silver in it, and that's what's going to keep the heat off of your hands. It reflects the heat back. Then another layer of print, and then I can just set my whole pumpkin stack right on top, and I'll just kind of eyeball it that it's in the middle, and I'm ready to go to the machine. The first step for stitching is to stitch along the line that we marked with chalk. I've made my stitch length a little longer than usual. You can use a stitch length of two and a half or three. When I get to one of the edges that I want to go over, I can use a stiletto or a pin just to make sure that it tucks underneath the foot. And notice that I am using a walking foot. One of the things that I like to do to save time as I'm stitching these rows is I'll drive over to where I need to be for the next row right along that edge. It'll be trimmed off later so it doesn't matter where you go. Sometimes I'll back stitch to get to the next row and sometimes I'll stitch forward. I'm going to keep going until I've covered the whole hot pad with stitching. Now I've stitched all the way across the pumpkin and it's time to cut in between the rows of stitching. You can use a sharp scissors and just go down each row and cut. Okay, the other thing you can use is an Ulfa chenille cutter. There are different size edges and you choose the one that will fit through the channels that you've made and then you just slide along and you don't have to use the scissors because this will just cut for you. As you go, little bits will fall off. This little piece is not going to stay on. That's just going to give your pumpkin a little more personality and his whole face will soften up and get real fluffy after we wash it. This extra edge was there so that you had an easy time getting your scissors or your cutter underneath to cut the ridges. Now we can trim that off because we don't need it for the final hot pad. Alrighty, now we're ready to put the binding on. Now it's time to cut the binding. I have my large binding rectangle. I'm going to fold the corner up so that the top edges are even. That's going to give me the perfect 45 degree angle. Now I'm going to just trim this fold off and I can set aside this triangle and use that for cutting the stems. Now I'm going to cut two and a half inch binding strips. I stitched the strips together with diagonal seams, pressed it, and trimmed the end square. Now I can stitch it to the edge of the hot pad with a quarter inch seam. As I'm approaching the corner, I mark with a pin a quarter inch from the corner. Then I stitch up to the pin and back stitch. I took it out of the machine, clipped the threads, and now I'm folding the binding up so that the raw edges make a straight line. I'll put my fingers on the crease to hold it in place and fold it over. This fold at the corner should be exactly even with the raw edge. Now I can turn it and continue sewing. As I approach that final corner, I'll move the binding out of the way so that I can wrap that first edge around, fold it down so that it covers that line of stitching, and place a pin in perpendicular to the edge. That way the pin won't be in the way when I stitch across it. I'll fold it down a little ways to hold it in place, and place another pin perpendicular to that edge. 
Now I can continue stitching. I'll stitch all the way to the corner and back stitch. I'll wrap the binding around the edge and top stitch it in place. This corner is ready to go. Along that edge I'm going to wrap the binding around and fold it down so that it covers the line of stitching. I'll hold it in place with wonder clips. When I get to this next corner I'll fold the side edge first and then the top edge will go down to make a mitered corner. And this one I'll hold in place with a pin. Now I'll fold the next edge down and just place one wonder clip. I don't go any further than that, one corner at a time and they end up a lot nicer. I'll move the binding out of the way and then I can get started on the top stitching. I'll start a little bit in from the edge and then back stitch to hold it in place. Then I can stitch along that whole edge. I'll continue stitching and move those wonder clips as I go. I know that I'm catching the binding because I folded it to cover the line of stitching. I'll slow down as I get to the corner and take one stitch at a time. I'll stop with my needle down, make sure the pin is gone, and then I can turn the corner and continue stitching. Now it's time to wrap that binding around the next edge and hold it in place with wonder clips. I'm heading into the final corner of my hot pad. I'm going to fold that extended binding in thirds, tucking the raw edge in. Then I'm going to keep stitching. I won't stop at the corner. I'll just continue stitching past the corner, tucking the edges in as I go. I'll stop, adjust the binding so that the raw edge is tucked in and it's folded in thirds. And this tail of binding that I'm making will look about the same size as the binding on the hot pad. I'll need to stitch along for 5 or 6 inches so that I have enough to fold around and make the hot pad loop. I placed a pin in the binding. Now I'm going to fold it underneath and then turn it so the pin is facing sideways. I'll hold this binding underneath in place with a couple of wonder clips. And then I'm going to move the pin because I'll be stitching in the ditch next to the binding and the pin needs to be perpendicular to the stitching. Now I'm at the machine. I'm going to stitch in the ditch next to the binding. My wonder clips are out of the way and I've moved that pin so I'm not stitching through a pin. I lowered my stitch length to about one or one and a half so that I have teeny tiny stitches that are really going to hold that end in place. And now I'll stitch back and forth three or four times to really anchor the end. Now I could take the wonder clips off and turn it over on the back side and clip the end of the binding and now it's ready to go. This is a bias edge so it shouldn't ravel, although you could put fray check on if you're worried a little bit about it. I tossed my finished hot pad in the washer and the dryer and it's all fluffed up and ready to use.